I'm David Normal. So I'm going to, you know, start out with talking a little bit more about who I am and how I got to the crossroads of curiosity. And so I've always had a strong interest in collage art. And, uh, you know, I started making collages when I was really young. I think I have some that go back to the time that I was maybe as young as like 10 years old. You know, so this collage is something I made when I was 19. And already I'm working with some of the, some of this is 19th century um, illustration pieces down here and in here. And back in those days, you know, I would cut things out from magazines, old magazines, or I would photocopy stuff off from the library and then, you know, make it all like this. And so I got involved in, in Burning Man uh, in making projects for them. I did a lot of different types of projects. I did animation, I did the large sculptures, I did a lot of traveling and documentary type things. And eventually in 2008, I wanted to get back purely to painting. And I, and you know, so I started to make these paintings uh, around 2008. This one's the human tree from 2010. And as I was making the paintings, I began to, here's another painting that's purely oil paint. There's no, this is not collage at all. It's all completely from my imagination and drawn by hand. But I began to feel like I wanted to integrate these collage elements that are very important to me. And so I began to make, uh, you know, some mm, like animated GIFs like this one. I, I think I was making this a little bit prior to when I went back to doing the oil painting. So I'm doing collage animation, for instance, of different, different types. And then I began to feel like I wanted to bring these different elements together, to bring the uh, collage and the painting together. So I turned this into, this is actually an acrylic painting and not oil, you know, but I took those animated elements and then made them static and refined them into this, you know, finished painting called Menage a Trois. And so this is from, I think, about 2011, I made that. And this is another example. Then I started wanting to get back to working with computer graphics because like the Menage a Trois piece doesn't really, well, it was inspired by a computer graphic. It didn't really uh, incorporate using the computer directly. Whereas this, I scanned everything in and then I printed it out with a large format printer and then painted over it with oil paint, and then finally scanned it back in. And the finished piece depends upon what you choose, but the finished piece is really a, a print, you know, and it's a digital piece in the end. So I began to make pieces that were light boxes, you know, and I wanted to present the work as double-sided and as these collages that were illuminated from both sides and would kind of hang in space. And that would bring me back to the sculptural things I was doing with Burning Man. So I was taking a lot of these different, you know, uh, elements from my background, computer graphics, sculpture, painting, and an overall interest in, in collage to, well, this is another different show, same type of uh, work. And then, and then also my work with Burning Man. Here's an exhibit of my paintings at Burning Man in 2010 in what's called the cafe, a uh, kind of central part, uh, what's called the Center Camp Cafe. The paintings were around the, the oculus of this large dome. And they're about six feet by seven feet. They were printed on vinyl both sides so that the light would kind of shine through them. So anyway, what I was trying to say is that I was taking, you know, the different elements and bringing them together. And uh, so in 2013, uh, no, in, you know, in 2013, I had gone to Burning Man once again, and I, I decided that I wanted to work, work with Burning Man yet again. And so I contacted uh, the director of Burning Man, and I said, well, I heard that your theme is 1901. And I'd like to, you know, I've got an idea for that. I'd like to create a kind of cabinet of curiosities 
that uses all this 19th century uh, illustration to create, you know, cabinets of curiosity that would be these large light boxes that would be, you know, support the theme. So Larry Harvey, director of Burning Man, he says, well, I love that idea of making the collages based on 19th century imagery, but the theme's not 1901. The theme is caravansary. And I didn't know what a caravansary was actually, so it had to be explained to me that these were these, you know, resting places of the overland camel caravans in the age of the Silk Roads. And so, um, you know, we batted this back and forth and came up with the idea of a crossroads of curiosity that would expand the idea of a cabinet of curiosity out from just the rectilinear, you know, presentation of objects in a case to being, you know, a sets of dramatic tableau that are, are kind of a collection of, of human dramas and, and human phenomena. So, so that's where we got started with the Crossroads of Curiosity. And I was looking for, at that time, um, 19th century illustrations. And it was only shortly after that, maybe uh, it was, I think, in early, early December that I learned of the uh, British Library's release into the Flickr Commons of over a million images. And so that was really, you know, kind of a stupendous thing for me. Here's another image. These were, I'm just flicking to the next image. These are kind of 3D images that were for the proposal for, or as we were working on, you know, the planning, the visualization of the project. But anyway, any rate, so speaking of visualization, once, once I had that in hand, then I was extremely inspired, you know, because I had just an endless amount of collage material to work with to uh, create these pieces. And so the end result was we were making, uh, this is, shows this to be 242 inches wide by, you know, uh, they were eight feet by 20 feet, the final pieces. So at the same time, I was also designing these large frames. But to go back to working with the British Library's collection, so I began to make the collages. And what I would do is I would go just, you know, searching through the database, just looking at one image after another, just about the same way as if I was going to flip through a book and look at every illustration in the book. And then I would mark the, the images for what I liked. You know, so it was a very entrancing process. I would sit there for hours just clicking one image after another, you know, sometimes going through, you know, 100 or 200 images without seeing anything that was of interest to me, and at other times, you know, being kind of a vein of, of things that I liked. And I would favorite all these out to, you know, I collected, I think, in total something like 3,000 images. And then I would begin to select the ones that I liked best. And, and so I'm not sure people always ask me, you know, well, why did you select the certain things that you liked? And, and a lot of times the things would just go together. I mean, I believe that the machine gun and the skunk were just side by side with each other in the Flickr favorites page. So it was just sort of obvious that the, the work had already been done for me. You know, but the, the Afghan warrior here, he, he was close by, you know, and so... He ends up then, I decided to put him on the uh, riding the skunk, you know, and, uh, and so I found, this is in the background, the tepidarium of the Forum Bath of Pompeii, and then on this side is an uh, image of Elijah's cave in Jerusalem. So I then I kind of put those two things together, and this was some sort of, you know, bazaar, but that ended up getting filtered out. And, I, and, and so in the process of making the collages, I experimented quite a bit to, especially on this one, you know, some of them came pretty quickly, but this one I chose to, to display because I did so many different versions. This is a collage that I call conflamingulation. And, you know, some elements didn't end up in the final piece. So for instance, I had a troubadour with an elephant head. And while that might have been good, he just somehow didn't fit in. And so, you know, <laughs> so gradually, uh, you know, it began to revolve around this conflict. I've got on one side a Maxim machine gun and on the other side a, a Gatling gun. And uh, uh, this is, I think, yeah, this is pretty much the finished collage right here. Um, 
So these became the raw material from which I painted. So the, the collages were actually, you know, became sketches. And so now you can see there's a shot in my studio. That's actually the finished painting. You get an idea of the size of it. And I'm working on the next painting. That's me with my back to the uh, camera there. Uh, and so what's going on here is that I'm painting these actually as light boxes. The original paintings uh, glow. You know, I used, um, I have a kind of method where I have a plastic sheet that glows behind the, the substrate that I'm painting on, which is a polypropylene film. And then I'm painting transparencies of acrylic. There's no white paint in it. And uh, so the original is actually a light box. And here we go. Here this shows, I'm, this is, you know, in progress, the painting. Uh, this is for the painting called Ostrisk Azocracy. Um, so this painting now has been scanned back into the computer. What I would do is after I was done, I'd lay this down on the table and I take my scanner and I flip it upside down and then I scan all the parts and pieces and uh, then assemble the, the pieces in Photoshop and then they become, you know, one piece that is high resolution and I'm able to, to print it large. So this is a piece of the larger pieces that were then displayed at Burning Man. I printed out in pieces. And so this has now been illuminated and I'm showing off that, yay, we've got the first one of these big prints and the light behind it. So that was kind of one of the first pieces that would be used to make the large, the large display. Uh, that's a close-up of the frame. The frames were, you know, eight feet by 20 feet. They were made of redwood with steel struts in between with aluminum channels to hold in the pieces and keep the electrical, the LED light strips in place. And here we're constructing the frames on a 40-foot trailer out in front of my house, right? Here's another shot of construction. See, what we were doing is we're, we, we stacked them up like pancakes. So we'd make one, then place another one on top of it, then do the next one, and, uh, and there we go, up on a 40-foot trailer. And there it is, all, all packed and ready to ship to the desert, you know. And some of the neighbor, you know, one of my neighbors didn't like this too much, you know. Uh, it went on, we got into a pretty big deadline crunch, and, you know, we're still sawing and banging away at 5.30 in the morning. And I live, I don't actually live in San Francisco. I live just outside of it in the idyllic beach town of Stinson Beach, you know. Um, and it's pretty quiet there. I mean, you can hear the surf pounding. And if we're around, you can hear the, uh, you know, skill saws and uh, impact driver drills going. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, um, there was a little bit of fallout. The police had to come and et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the police were very apologetic. They didn't really want to bother us. And we got the things out to Burning Man. And, and I, don't ha I didn't have any pictures of the forklift lifting them out the truck. But this gives you an idea of the labor conditions at Burning Man. They, uh, you know, this is before the festival started. You don't see any crowds of, you know, bicyclists and people in sparkly cowboy hats right now. It's just, it's just empty desert. And we're, const uh, there we are, there's our crew. We work day and night, and that's by night. And we got the first piece, I think this was just after we got the first piece all framed up. And, and you know, um, this is a, kind of a panoramic shot of the setting that was made around the pieces uh, at Burning Man. So these tents, you can see it's in a tent. The tents surrounded the base of the man and created a kind of shelter where this, what they called a souk, um, it had all these booths with regional groups of Burning Man people. People, there was a Lithuanian group and uh, Chinese and uh, Japanese groups, and there were the Norwegian contingent and Canadian. So they have this whole, you know, global Burning Man, you know, convention going on in these things. And my piece has formed a, a centerpiece for that activity. And so this is one of the pieces set up, and that's uh, my friend Blage, crew member there, posing with it. And uh, here we start to have the pieces by night. 
in their full effect. This is, shows, uh, you know, the, the presentation within the tent at about dusk, and that's the collage piece we were looking at earlier, conflamingulation. So now we see the actual effect of the pieces and the audience interacting with the work. Um, so people came around and were fascinated by the artwork. They spent a lot of time trying to decipher what the meaning of these strange uh, images was. And uh, I took to giving what I called docent tours, where I would you know, walk people around from image to image and explain the imagery and what it meant, meant to me. The reason I call it a docent tour is because I actually don't really have much better of an idea of what the imagery means than anybody else. <laughs> you know, I mean, I made it, but it wasn't like it was made with some sort of, you know, didactic um, purpose that it's supposed to explain something to somebody. So rather, the images are, are very much, you know, expressions of, oh, of something that's just energetic, how shall we say? It's not a specific, emotional. You know, it's not specifically confined to something that I can put into words. But I do put it into words. And I'll explain this to you soon when we go and look at the prints that I brought with me. So, you know, this is one, one part here. And uh, people lined up looking at it. And me pointing out the, uh, oh, I think that's a plesiosaurus there um, with the armillary sphere. And uh, uh, this is the, the sultan here in a... Turkish uh, robe from, I think, about the 17th century. Um, and one person pointed out that the woman in this picture looks very much like the woman in the uh, painting. So I think she was looking at it going, is it really me? <laughs> you know. And so this gives you an idea of the scale of this whole thing. So Burning Man was a 105 foot tall statue this year. And uh, the paintings are in the center of each one of these tents, uh, you know. Uh, and you can see in the background the cafe where I did the show in 2010, that kind of structure towards the back. Um, so this was actually after when we were getting ready for the burn. Um, the tents had been removed, but it was a nice opportunity to show the placement of the... Uh, of the pieces. Oh, I have the laser part of it. I forgot. Um, so, so the the this piece here, you know, and there's another one over here, and maybe way in the back you can see a third one. The fourth one would be over here somewhere. But so they were arrayed in in a square on the ordinal points of the compass, and so the entrances to those tents. The you know this would probably be, I forget. I forget what the, the Burning Man looks. Uh, I think it looks south. And so north is up that way, you know, and the west is to the arm. So he's, so he kind of orients the whole festival with his positioning. And uh, now we're loading them back up onto the truck. It required a crane to pull them out of the, out from their place. Each one of those pieces was composed of half inch thick plexiglass in addition to the redwood frame. So, you know, they weighed um, with the final framing over a thousand pounds each. Um, and, oh, this was from exhibiting the other day. This is one of the original pieces. And this is me in a conversation with somebody. I'm on the, uh, that's me on the, on the right. And we're talking about the piece called Curiosilotropy. And that's one of the actual original pieces um, lit up at night. 